station. This is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Houston, this is the space station. I'm ready for the event. ESA, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Yeah. Houston, we can hear you. Yeah, uh, shall I say something? Oh my, I'm so nervous. Uh, station, this is ESA. How do you hear me? Hello, Isa. I read you loud and clear. You should not be nervous. I am several thousand kilometers away. There is nothing I can do. <laughs> this is so exciting. We can hear you. Yeah. So what about... Oh my God. Is it really you? Oh. <laughs> Luca, but you can't see us. You can hear us, but you can't see us. Is that right? <laughs> yes, that's correct. I can only hear you, but I cannot see you. But you can, I, obviously, you can see me because I can hear laughing in the background. <laughs> so what time is it where you are? Are you tired? Did you wake you up? Oh, no, not at all. Uh, this is, it's uh, 6 o'clock in the afternoon. We, are, we use the GMT here, the Greenwich Mean Time. Uh, it's easier for everybody uh, because we have to work both with Moscow, which is ahead of us, and uh, Europe, which is basically on our same timeline, and Houston, which is behind us. So GMT works a little bit for everybody. But look, it doesn't uh, it doesn't look very um, you know cozy where you are. I think it's cozy. It's uh, it's got nice lights. Uh, we have food. We have water. Uh, we have good friends up here, so we we like it. We enjoy it. It's a little bit like a, a special submarine only space. Wonderful. Luca, we are so happy to have you here. And Tim, let's start. We have some great questions for you uh, <laughs> from some kids here in Sweden. And uh, we would like to start with it. So hey, go ahead, Tim. Luca, it is wonderful to see you back on board the International Space Station. You're looking great. You're obviously at home back in your environment. I'm going to get straight on with some questions that the, the audience have asked. So the first question is from Liv, uh, Liv Noifalis, who's nine years old, who asks, can you describe what you see from the space station? Now, I just checked on my phone, and you should be somewhere between Australia and New Zealand, but it's nighttime. But can you just tell us in general, what's the view from the space station? Well, Tim, first of all, it's great to hear your voice. And uh, secondly, I think you'll be also uh, in agreement if I said that the, the, the best thing that we see from the space station, the, the, the one that really fills our eyes is, is Earth. Uh, when we look outside the windows, specific, especially Cupola, the, the European built window, um, what we see, it really fills our, our view is the Earth. And uh, every sight of the Earth is always different, whether, the, whether there are clouds or the sun is shining, we are over water, over the land, uh, no matter where we are, every time we look outside, sunrise, sunset, day, night, there is always something to see, it's always interesting, and uh, I would say that that's the, the view that really catches our eyes the most. Now, we can also look off the sides and, uh, and look at, 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 at stars, constellation. We see a lot of stars up here, uh, a lot more than in general we see from the ground because there is no, no light pollution. But these days, actually, with the, when the, the moon is up, is up the, the light of the moon is so bright that we only see a black sky. So, yeah, the Earth is just, just amazing to watch. Thank you, Luca. It's a view I, I miss. Very much. So the second question is from Pele Luvgren, who's three years old, who asks, what sounds do you hear in space? <laughs> uh, 
Ah, uh, and that, that is <laughs> that is a really good question. So it depends on where you are. Mostly on board the space station, the sounds that we hear are fans, ventilation going on, moving air around. Because if we didn't have these fans and and uh, and ventilation, while I'm breathing, I would create a bubble of 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 uh, uh, of my own breath, which is carbon dioxide, which is not very good for me. It would it would just stay here. And so, in order to take away the carbon dioxide and replace it with fresh air. We need these these fans constantly moving the air, and these fans make a noise. So this that is the most constant noise on the space station, and to me it is like the space station itself is alive and breathing. So it's a good noise to have, almost like on an airplane if you've ever been onto one. When you are outside the space station inside a spacesuit, what you hear is a pump keeping you alive. Uh, we have a pump inside the spacesuits that moves the air and the water and the oxygen and that is the sound that you hear, this pump uh, whizzing around. Uh, Thank you, sorry, okay. Tim, because I never had, uh, had the opportunity to ask a guest this. Can you, can you answer upside down? Yes, <laughs> upside down on the next question, please. Okay, Luca, I'm going to hand over to Thomas in a minute, but uh, I've got one more question from you, and it's from Livia Antonson, <laughs> who's five years old, and I am so glad that Livia asked this question. Thank you, Livia. Luca, if you had any hair, how would you wash your hair in space? <laughs> well, um, that is a tough question. I haven't had hair for a long time. So I, I probably wouldn't remember really well, but I've seen my, my crewmates washing their hair and what they do, they get it wet and then they put soap in it. They, they make the soap very bubbly. And then uh, they just uh, put some more water on a towel and, um, and then they, they, put, they pass the towel through the hair and they make sure that they get most of the soap and the water out. And then we hang the waters to dry, the, the, the wet towel to dry, and we recover the water. But there is a fantastic video of my crewmate, Karen Nyberg, back from 2013, where she washes her hair. And Karen has long blonde hair, and she takes very good care, and the hair goes all the way up, and she looks like a Norwegian troll, and it's really cute. Thank you, Luca. Great answer. Iva, it's great talking to you. I'm going to hand over to Thomas for a few more questions now. Thank you, Tim. Great talking Hello, to Luca. you, Tim. This is really great to see you. Uh, you are enjoying uh, the stay on... <laughs> enjoying your time on station. Um, let me directly continue with the next question from Noah Salomonsen. He's seven years old. And he would like to know, how do you know if it's night or day when it's always dark in space? Oh, well, um, in space it's always dark, yes. But on the Earth, uh, as soon as we look outside, we, we, if we see the Earth illuminated is day, if it's dark, it's night. But to us, it doesn't matter because we just use our watches and we go... We, we, we go for the normal day, uh, day cycle, so for about uh, 14, 16 hours we are awake, we sleep for 8 hours, and it doesn't matter what, what, what it's, what's, whether it's dark outside or light, because we use the lights inside. Now, of course, uh, we, we, we love to watch uh, the Earth, whether it's day or night, so all we have to do is look outside the window and we found out whether we are in the, in the night uh, part, in the night part of the orbit or the day part of the orbit. Thanks a lot, Luca, for this answer. And I directly come to the next question from Daniel Zavicevas. He's also seven years, and he would like to know how does ISS avoid crashing into the thousands of satellites that are flying around? Well, I, I really hope we never crash into any of the satellites. 
So uh, there are two parts to this question. The first, the first answer is that normally satellites are much, much higher. We, are at a, we, over, we, we fly at about 400 kilometers, while normally satellites fly at thousands of kilometers away. So we are really on different orbits. However, we, we sometimes run the risk of uh, uh, getting into debris. And that, that happens because there are old satellites that, have been, that are destroyed, that are broken, and so uh, there, are a lot, there are a lot of debris around the Earth. Now, from the ground, we have radars tracking those debris, and whenever, whenever from the ground they think that we might be crossing orbit with one of these uh, pieces of uh, space trash, we just change our orbit and, and get, get away from them. Thanks, Luca, for this answer. And a last question I have is from Karl Avid. He's five years old, and he has actually a very interesting question about the future. And I'm sure you have uh, uh, some interesting answer to that, because he's asking to which planet would you like to travel most and why? Well, um... I'm going to answer this question sideways. And so I have two answers for, for you guys. I think that the planet I would like to visit the most is planet Earth, because I believe that right now there are no other planets that are as beautiful. We haven't found a planet as beautiful as our planet. It's the only one that we know that has life. It's really, we, it's really unique in, in our solar system. And I haven't visited all of it, so that's that's the planet that I would like to visit the most. Uh, there are so many places that I want to go to, including Sweden. And then my second my second answer uh, is if I if I if I could go anywhere, well, uh, the destination, the 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 best destination is the one that is unknown. So in the future, if we go back to the moon, I would love to go to the moon. If I could fly to Mars, I would love to go to Mars. But right now, my mission is to fly on the space station, and I'm really excited of all the science and exploration and that technology that we are developing. And uh, this is exactly where I want to be right now. Fantastic. Luca, a lot of uh, applause for, for your answers. Thanks a lot. It has really been a pleasure and an honor to talk to you. We have of Tim and also Christa Fugelsang. <laughs> it's um, wonderful, yeah. It's with us here. Uh, it's great to see you. And uh, I hand back to our dear moderator. Yes, and, and please, I have a last question for you because we have a culture festival here in Stockholm. And I wonder, do you have any chance of enjoying uh, any culture on the spaceship? You seem to be the king. Well, well, of of course we 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 have a lot of cultural events. Uh, first of all, you have you have to understand that this is an international space station, so we have two Russians on board, three Americans, one Italian, and it, it, it sounds like the beginning of a joke, but it, but it's not. We do a lot of activities together, and that's already a cultural exchange. Um, one of the most favorite cultural exchanges that we do is actually dinners. We, we try to have dinners um, all together so that sometimes we eat Italian food, sometimes we eat American food, Russian food, and, you know, telling stories from our countries and from our background, that's, uh, that's already opening our minds and uh, 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 um, increasing our culture. But of course, now on the space station, uh, we also have access to, uh, to movies and, and to music. We can play music, we can listen to music. Uh, we, we watch movies together from different, from different countries. But in the end, when you talk about culture, culture is knowledge. And we on the space station, we create knowledge. Our job is to do science. We perform up to 120 hours of science in a week with all kinds of different experiments, uh, human experiments, uh, uh, physiology, biology, uh, physics, engineering, and that is all going down for the benefit of Earth. And what more culture could you expect than that?
thank you so much. It's been such a great pleasure. Luca, it's the best phone call I ever had in my life. And I think the Swedish audience want to say bye bye. Hey, do Luca. Oh, that was great. Wonderful. And thank you so much. <laughs> wow. We don't want to leave him, do we? Bye bye. And thank you so much, Thomas and, and team. It's it's wonderful. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you to all participants from ESA. Station, we are now resuming operational audio communications.